scripture today is from James chapter 1. Act on what you hear. Post this at all the intersections, dear friends. Lead with your ears, follow up with your tongue, and let anger straggle along in the rear. God's righteousness doesn't grow from human anger. So throw all spoiled virtue and cancerous evil into the garbage. In simple humility, let our gardener, God, landscape you with the word, making a salvation garden of your life. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but. Letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are, what they look like. But whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life, even out of the corner of their eye and sticks with it, is no distracted scatterbrain, but a person of action. That person will find delight. <clears throat> that person will find delight and affirmation in the action. Anyone who sets themselves up as religious by talking a good game is self-deceived. This kind of religion is hot air and only hot air. Real religion, the kind that passes muster before God, is this. Reach out to the homeless and the loveless in their plight and guard against corruption from the godless world. Here ends our reading. Our words from James today are strong words. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, it's hard for us to hear. I know with my son, I talk a lot about listening and being a good listener and how important it is. I tell him, you know, these are the things that will keep you safe if you listen to your mom and your dad and um, do the things that we ask of you. Which may be a little hypocritical because honestly, I don't know how good a listener I am. God promises that if we follow God's word and listen, that God will be with us, that God will walk with us. Now, I believe that's true whether we listen or not, but I sure do know that when I am listening, I find myself more connected, more grounded, um, in a better place to meet the world around me. There are these moments in life where I feel more connected with God than I do on the average day to day. I don't know if that's your experience or not, but I have these moments. I have these connection points. And most often those connection points happen when I am fully present in the moment not worrying about what tomorrow will bring, not um, fuming in frustration at what I'm reading on Facebook or um, thinking about what someone said or what I will do. The times I'm most connected and grounded are the times that I am present in the moment, either listening to someone's story or after a really long hike and you get to the top and you see the view and you know that God is there. 
those times when you are fully present, focused on what is going on around you. Those times when our ears and eyes are fully open to that moment are the times when I feel most connected to God and most whole and full. And I think that's something that we are lacking right now as a community, as a society. Stress and pressure and change are not conducive to good listening and being present in the moment. And I know when things are different and maybe you don't have access to the same things that enabled you to be quiet and listen, listen for the voice of God, listen for the voice of your neighbor, um, find that place of quiet connection. It's difficult. So this day, as we remind ourselves of the importance of getting quiet, the importance of opening our eyes and our ears, listening for the voice of God through our reading of scripture, through our time of prayer, I invite you to get creative to find a place or a way to listen, to be in the moment. Whether that place or that time for you is going out and ripping out some weeds in a garden, whether it is going for a walk in your neighborhood, whether it is going to the bike path and taking a bike ride, whether it is finding a comfy chair and steeping yourself in the word of God, whether it's making a cup of tea and sitting down and calling that person that you know needs a phone call. All of these things, all of these ways are places where we can be in the moment with open ears and open eyes and listen for the voice of God. That is how we truly live in abundance with the fullness of what God has to offer for us each and every day. God's blessings to you this week. May you surely feel the presence of God in and around you with open ears and open eyes. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and indeed all of God's good creation. If you see your brother standing by the road, God, we come before you today in thanksgiving. We ask that you open our eyes, you open our ears, help us to see you, help us to hear your voice, send your Holy Spirit, fill us with your presence and your love, help us to know surely that we are yours and that the divisions among us truly do not matter, that you call all of us your children. Help us to reach out in love and compassion to our neighbor. God, be with those who are hurting. Be with those who are lonely. Be with those who are sick. Give us strength and energy and 
the creativity to connect in new ways to the people that you would have us connect with. God, show up as you promised to over and over and over again in scripture. Show up and offer those words of promise. Do not be afraid for I am with you. God, we thank you for your promises to us and to our neighbors. Be with us and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to gather around the table of our Lord this night, I invite you to get some bread and some wine or some juice and bring it to the table. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. It was on that night that Jesus gathered around a table with his friends and followers to share in the feast of the Passover, which is the celebration of the liberation of God's people. And that night, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his followers and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And then Jesus took the cup. He said the blessing and gave it to his followers. And he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of this cup, do it to remember me. I invite you this night to take the bread and share it, to take the cup and share it and remember Jesus. If you find yourself alone this night, I invite you to take communion with me now. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
May this meal and the remembrance of Jesus present with us strengthen you and give you hope for the journey. Amen.